Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Chat, my weekly vlog series posted every Monday at lunchtime in the UK. And yes, I can juggle. Hello Maya, are you watching the... Here, do you want the tennis balls? Do you want to hop on the bed nice and early? Hop! Hop! No, oh, you can see her head again. Sorry, I'll have to settle for that. She thinks they're food. They're, they're not food. Anyway, hello again. And this week, we're going to go through the questions. I'm talking with my hands again when my hands are actually just out of shot. I need to bring them in here. We're going to go through the questions and I'm going to answer them on the comments of last week's Let's Chat. Other than that, for show and tell, I actually have some Japanese candies to show you rather than a game this time. Thought for a bit of a change to do that instead. And that's about it, really. The Monster 4 Ultimate Hype is still very, very real at this point, sadly. Um, but I don't need to go over that again, do I? I really honestly can't wait. And it's going to be, well, this is going to be the 2nd of February. Uh, Sunday is the 1st, yeah. So we've got 12 days left to wait by the time that you see this. And it's painful. It's painful. Anyway, let's get on with stuff. The first thing I want to show you is... By the way, some of these packets are empty because um, somebody ate them. But let's see. Let's show you this. So if you haven't seen one of these before, I order a monthly random assortment of Japanese candy from a site called Akashi Connection. It's £14, roughly. They, they do it in American dollars, but roughly that's what it is in pounds. So there's the first thing I want to show you. And these are very, very light, kind of wafer, wafer, wafer-shaped crisps. And they taste like uh, a vegetable broth that's had, like, say, a, a, a meat-based stock cube put in it. And it's they were really, really nice. I don't know why it's got such a uppity-looking potato guy on it. He's apparently King Potato, as it says in his sash there. But yeah, they're really nice. I really like them. They're, they tasted really light as well. And they're only 46 calories. It's a lot less than other types of crisps. However, there was also a secondary flavour of the same brand. And there's the same uppity potato guy mascot there. That's supposed to be just an assortment of vegetable flavoured crisps. Now, they're not like literal vegetable crisps if you've had those before. They're supposed to taste like that assortment there. Tomatoes, onions, carrots, radishes, etc. Et it just tasted like potato sticks you know that kind of crisps are just you know the long sticks they had bits of stuff in them but they didn't taste as nice those first ones though really really nice next this the assortment this month was mostly light savory stuff i guess because it's the new year so christmas was when all the chocolate and whatnot was but these these are korean barbecue flavored bubble chips i guess you could say if you want a comparison like say kettle brand if you have those where you are Apparently cream barbecues are really nice, but they are, they are very tedious to set up because you essentially do everything yourself. So that elicits the flavour of what you can see down there. And they were really, really nice. So yeah, that's another Japanese candy. On to something silly now. This is very similar to a uh, candy we have in the UK. I can't remember the brand, but it's just like a, it's a jelly almost, or I don't know, like a gummy, but it's in a wrap of paper in a big circle. You can't really see on that, sadly. And you kind of have to peel it off the paper. I, I don't like them, personally. It's essentially exactly the same. Except it's got some kind of hip... ...apple on there? I, I, I don't know what that is. I mean, is that supposed to be a lady? Why does it have a flower stuck to its head? Apples don't have a, a flower stuck to their head. Either way, that was a little sundry type thing they threw in. One of the only sweet things actually included this month. Another one! We have colon. Sorry, I misread that. If it was missing an L, this would be the worst candy ever. And apparently these things on it are from some new massive show in Japan that's like overtaking Pokemon in terms of popularity. I guess they're like the, the Pikachu equivalents. They even look like them, to be honest. So they were... I don't like the name for these at all, but these were little wafer things again, so very light, and the middle was supposed to taste like latte. Now, I don't actually drink coffee. I don't like the taste of coffee, and yet I like them because the taste was so mild. All you could really taste was the very sweet wafer. So yeah, they were very nice. And again, I, I don't know anything about that show, I just know that it's massively, massively... Oh, come on, go into focus. Massively, massively popular in Japan right now. So there you are. It's another thing, my desk is getting filled up at this rate. Two more things to go. This is a weird one. This, this is actually maybe gross. This is... Bake Brand Creamy Cheese. This isn't actually cheese, it's... A very light, almost chocolatey stuff in those little cubes you can see in the box there, but they taste of cream cheese. 
and you might be thinking to yourself, that sounds bloody weird. You're not wrong, I also saved one so that I could show you what they look like. So here we are. They're rough as well, actually, to, to feel. Can I kind of get that to focus? Come on, focus in. Like, there. Yeah, that's what they look like. And then if I do this... You see that? They're like crumbly on the inside. But if you actually eat that, it tastes of cream cheese. And I don't know whether I like it or not. I would actually say they're a little bit gross. But it's one of the most unique things I have ever eaten. Also, I have to stop for a second to say, Maya, oi, oi, oi. Stop cleaning yourself. That's a horrible sound and I don't want the mic picking it up. You don't lick yourself there in public. The last thing to show you very quickly is a very kiddie type thing here. It's animal crackers, however I think they must be a learning aid because they had English names for the animals on the crackers, like you can see on there. Cow, duck, lion, etc. Gold award for, what does this say on it? Monday Selection 2014 Quality Institute. It's animal crackers, it's Japanese animal crackers. If you want a British equivalent, I thought they tasted like slightly sweet rich tea biscuits. I don't know if you have an equivalent of those in America or anywhere else, but if you know what rich tea biscuits are, they tasted like those except a little bit sweeter. Maya, you're back making that noise, that's horrible. Jump on my bed and try and eat the juggling balls. No? She's just staring. She's hiding up here though because I'm dog sitting for my sister, so her dog is downstairs and they don't get on that well. But anyway, yeah, so I hope you don't mind me showing off just an assortment of the Japanese candy for a change to a game from my old collection. It's a monthly thing, sometimes it, it lines up with when I film these, sometimes it doesn't. This time it kind of did, although, you know, most of the packets were empty, but I thought you might like a, a slice of Japanese life, and if you are interested, Akashi Connection is the website, £14 a month if you want a random assortment. You don't get to pick what you get, it's random, they usually do some kind of theme. As I say, this time it was mostly, like, savoury or, or, you know, puffed wafers. Maya, seriously, I don't want to hear that noise. That is not where a tongue is supposed to go. Alright, thank you. Oh, I hope that wasn't getting picked up by the mic, but it was making me ill. Speaking of being ill, I got caught in another blizzard this morning when I took that dog out again. And I'm already coming down with something I feel, and I don't think that's helped matters. So all I've done all day prior to this is mope around and drink tea. So if I look a bit off, that would be why. Also, once again, I didn't shave in time for recording this. And my hair is getting uncouth as well, but I have a haircut at the end of the week. So by the time you hear this, it'll have, ha have happened. So next time... I will be looking hopefully a bit more presentable, I hope. Anyway, I'm loading up the comments here in last week's Let's Chat. And we'll scroll down and go to the earliest one first. Yes. Alright, so Dragonakis left three comments. He said, that beard though. So a little bit back, but not quite as much this time. Have to say, prior to Arkham Asylum and the Chris Nolan films, I wasn't a massive fan of Batman. I imagine many people are in the same boat as you regarding that. And that was a very loud bus going past the window. Then you said 56k modem, not much slower than your current internet then. Ha ha ha, ha 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 ha. Move on. David Brown, a new commenter I think. So Flick, you spelt my name wrong. Can I have your friend code in preparation for Monster Hunter 4? And then you listed yours and said your name is David. You don't actually need to exchange friend codes to play in the same rooms in Monster Hunter 4. The way it works is, you set up a room, well assuming you want to be the host, and that room has a unique room code. And then you can also put a passcode on it as well. So all you need to do is give out the room code and if you put a password on it, put that out. Or if you just want to play with randoms, you make the room and then you hit an NPC. Well, I mean, you don't, you, know, you don't smack them. You talk to an NPC and then they ring a gong and then random people can join. But the way we will we'll be doing it when Monster Hunter 4 is out is via the Steam group on get together nights on say Saturdays usually. And I'll just give out the room and the passcodes there. And then it'll be a first come first serve. Once we've done a few hunts, I'll swap people out assuming there's a demand, and by all accounts there's probably going to be a lot more demand for spaces with 4U than there was for 3U because not as many people have a Wii U. So we will be doing a lot of swap outs, we might have two rooms going at once, but the long and the short of it is you don't need to exchange friends codes, so I don't think I need to put my friend code out there for any reason. I'm never really on the 3DS unless I'm playing a game, so I don't think I need to do that. If there's something else that comes along that does mean I have to do that then I'll, I'll list it on my about page on my channel which is where I list like my my PSN and stuff like that. Kuno K asks what's the origin of the tata for now quote that is one of the things you used to do on a program called ICQ which was before MSN long before Skype and probably the first general chat program outside of actual chat rooms I used when I was a kid on the internet 
and I can't remember if there was an actual button that said ta-ta for now or it was a smiley that was called that or maybe I just started saying it there but that's what made me do it and then after leaving ICQ going to MSN I just kept it as a way of saying goodbye to end the conversation and I decided that I still do it these days on Skype as well so why not end my videos like I do a conversation with anyone else and it's kind of a catchphrase I guess I don't think catchphrases are supposed to be the last thing you say but that's how I'm using it and that's the origin ICQ is to blame and there's a reference to ICQ in Jazzpunk I almost blanked on the name of the game despite the fact I loved it Jazzpunk has an ICQ reference the little you can see an NPC with a flower face kind of semi lit up on the second level that is a reference to ICQ that's what the icon was I ICQ might still I'm going to check I want to know if ICQ still exists ICQ oh my god it worked it, it does does it still look the same? Oh, it does! It still has the same flower icon and everything. My god! I mean, I was using this over 10 years ago, and it's still a thing. That is unbelievable. It, it looks a bit different, but they, they, they use the same flower icon. Well, there you go. Yeah, so ICQ still exists, and that's where it's from. Get ready for my face to change color again as we go back to the bright white YouTube background. Uh, by the way, if I sound congested again, I, I'm coming down with something. I can kind of hear it in my voice that I'm a bit congested. That is why. I blame the dog. Maya, I'm talking to you. I blame you. Yeah. She's just staring at me. <laughs> anyway. Stormkiller72 says that Tom Yum is an oriental spice, s spicy sour soup flavour. And then he linked to the Wikipedia ar article about it. It's cheating if you use Wikipedia. I could have done that. But yeah, so apparently that's what Tom Yum is. It's spicy and sour. That explains the really bizarre taste of those breadstick things that I showed off last week. I still have a couple of packets, actually. Uh, so yeah, that is a it is a weird mix. I, I get the spicy and the sour, and those are not two flavours you really want together, I don't think. But I thought they were alright. Better than, than those things. That's for damn sure. Anyway, Grinning Owl. Fancy Star Online, I agree, I agree that the original was great, but I also vastly enjoyed the other installments as well. I played up to Fancy Star Universe, which was the name of the MMO one that I couldn't remember last time, I think. Uh, before I finally decided it was time to put it down and move on. Also, the passive hype for Monster Hunter 4 is real, especially after doing Monster Hunter related stuff. That reminds me, thank you very much. I, well, originally I commissioned, or I asked Grinning Owl if he would be willing to do a drawing for me in return for, you know, a commission, so I'd pay him. And he did amazing character art of my character for Monster Hunter 4. And you can get a little bit of a preview of a mock-up of a thumbnail if you look at the screen now. I'm not saying that's the final version, and obviously the background's going to change depending on what's going on in each part. But his drawing is amazing. He did a fantastic job. And he's very nice because he wouldn't take my money afterwards. But I promised at least a shout-out. He'll be definitely be getting a shout-out in the series as well. And on that subject, I don't think Shulls has left a comment this week. She has not. But she just got in touch the other day there, or last night actually to show me some more This War of Mine fan art that she did. Basically all the key events of my playthrough which is now done. So it's a bit small, it might not display that well on the video but if you look at the screen now you will see a little bit of it. And if you go onto Twitter I retweeted her Tumblr link so you can see the full thing there. But it's all the key events leading up to the eventual end and I hope you enjoyed that series. I had fun with it. In a manner of speaking, it's not a, it's not a fun game but it's a game you can have fun with and you know it can make you look at yourself and question your your morals and your ethics, which is why I love it so much. But to go back to the comment, yes, um, sad, sadly I will not be joining you all probably. Gaming hardware is just not in the budget right now. Even if it's not in the budget right now, if it is in the future, it'll probably be getting played for quite a long time. Especially given how long I've been playing through you for, so don't worry about it. Moving on. Spherical Cube. That Dark Souls statue is marvellous, thank you. What a memento to a game... You have played to death. Yes, I agree. Any idea if there will be a Bloodborne Special or Collector's Edition? If so, do you know what's in it and will you be getting one? Well, they're like country specific, but I can say for sure, yes, there's a UK one. In fact, I can bring it up here to tell you what they get, what we get rather. It's very unimpressive to be honest. I was interested in a Bloodborne Special Edition, but when I saw what was in it, let me just type this in here. Here we go. You get, you know, full view. You get a quill with red ink. Which is fine, I actually think that looks pretty funky. But then you get like a bell, which I assume is relevant to the game. You get a tin case for the game. You get a notebook. You get the soundtrack, a digital soundtrack. You get an art book. 
you get a fedora for the equivalent of your summoning stone thing, you know, you, you put down this little ghost guy in Bloodborne rather than your sign, so it's a fedora for them, which I don't know why you would ever want. And then a fake book display for everything to hide in. It's As far as special editions go, it's called the Nightmare Edition, incidentally, if you want to type it into Google, Bloodborne Nightmare Edition. Didn't do anything for me, that, that, that does not appeal to me at all, apart from the quill, the quill looks quite smart, and I like the idea of it you know, writing in red ink, you can make that look badass. But other than that, no, I think that special edition is actually pretty bad. But yeah, that's what the UK is getting, the US one or wherever else could be very different. That's the only one I know of though. Back to the comments. I just got steamed. Hello Stormkiller. I am just finishing recording a Let's Chat. You got a cameo. How very dare you. There we go. Anyway, so I hope that answered your question. I'm not impressed by the one the UK is getting, so even if I don't manage to get a review copy, I'll just be buying the standard edition because it doesn't appeal. The collector's edition, I mean. My apologies, he says. Iron Paladin, I'm extremely hyped for 4 you, and I haven't played or even looked at 4 because he doesn't want to spoil anything, that is fair enough. Yeah, he did play through you until G rank, where I got stuck behind the great beige wall of Diablos. It's funny you should say that. Will that video have gone live by the time you hear me say this? Yes, yes, you'll have seen the video where we were taking on a G rank Diablos and Thaxar and Thurm just got stomped. And then, well, later in the night we got Reaper in and we tried again. You'll see how that goes. I don't think that part will be up yet, so I won't say anything about that just yet. Yeah, Diablos is, is no joke if you let him walk all over you. Sorry, her. Her. All Diabloses are female, and the black ones are in heat. It's disturbing, but true. So yeah, it's funny you should say that. You'll, you'll, see some, you'll have seen something very relevant to that. I'm going to thumb up your comment now, and by the time you hear this, you will already know what I mean. Brandon Daigle, who hasn't actually commented for quite some time, as he points out. After a long hiatus of not talking in the comment section of your videos, I must say that the second med medic, Lazarus, in my opinion, is not as good as the first one, Val. This is in relation to the two medics in Evolve, if you aren't aware. He then goes on to explain why this is the case, and he actually does mention that it seems like Lazarus isn't able to revive people in the water. I was able to do that in the beta, however it was very finicky, so either I was making a glitch happen by doing something I shouldn't have been able to, or the game was glitching slightly and making it harder to do something I should have been able to do. I'm not sure which was the case. I haven't played the full game yet, so I don't know. But some of your points regarding why Val is better than Lazarus actually are not true. Like the point you make is if the monster kills a player and eats the player, Lazarus can't resurrect them. That's fair enough. What could Val have done differently in that situation? Nothing. Val can slow the monster down. Yes, that is true. So against Wraith, she's better technically, or whichever one it is that flies, the lightning one. Um, maybe it's Kraken. She's technically better in that sense, however, the key point for the medic is to keep your team alive. The burst has a very short regen on it and is far better than the crappy med gun she gets. And the key thing that makes Lazarus better isn't technically just the ability to revive dead players at no penalty, which is the big thing for that ability anyway. But the other thing is he can cloak. So a smart monster, assuming he's ready to fight and not just wanting to escape so he'll go after the trapper to bring the dome down, will go after the medic. Val can't do anything really to avoid. The monster. Lazarus can. So for that reason alone he is infinitely better, in my opinion anyway. I don't know if CR or anyone else who was playing with me wants to jump in about Lazarus versus Val, but you can share your thoughts as well if you like. Uh, but yeah, we're... oh then you talk about... however, Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin, 420 praise it, game of the year, my work here is done. I am looking forward to Scholar of the First Sin, I just wish it wasn't in the release window that it is. There's too many things out in a very short period of time. And then after that there's a big gap, and then we're in a big gap right now where I'm kind of struggling to have enough content to get me over to Monster Hunter 4. But anyway, two more comments to go. Reaper, jealous of some of the figures you have, kind of funny how I just watched the unboxing of your Monster Hunter figure before this. Do you have any good iPhone games that you could recommend? Um, hmm, I think that's a, a non-sequitur, isn't it? Is it possible to have a good iPhone game? That's me being silly. Hang on, let me look at my... I've got a few very old games on my phone that I got a while ago. I don't know if there's a version for phones, but on my iPad I have a Picross clone, which is really, really good. I like that, like, I don't know if you know what Picross is. It's, a, it's a, like Sudoku, but it's, you make pictures, and I, I really like it. But anyway, on my phone I have... Angry Birds, Cut the Rope, Plants vs Zombies, Pigo Classic, Words! 
and Flappy Bird just because it was going to be removed, so I thought, get a piece of history. I have never actually opened it. Uh, fix Picks, that's a good one. Four Picks, One Word I like as well. And Font Quiz. If you know fonts from like movie titles or game titles, it, it shows you a little bit and you have to guess what it is. Uh, most of those I listed were free with the exception of like Angry Birds. And maybe that is free now these days. But yeah, like Angry Birds is a good time waster. I'm sure there's more modern versions. I haven't bought or downloaded a free version of any game on my phone for ages. Well, other than again, Flappy Birds when it was going to be removed. And again, only because it was going to be removed and I wanted a piece of history, even if it was something I was never going to play. But anyway. Um, what do you think will be better, Bloodborne or The Witcher 3? I think they're two very different games, so they don't really need to be put together, but I think The Witcher 3 will be better. Do you like hot sauce? And what is the hottest thing you've ever eaten? I don't like overly spicy food, so no. I don't like hot sauce. The most, or what is the hottest thing I've ever eaten? I'm a wimp when it comes to hot things, so I guess like really strong wasabi. That's, that's it. And I hated it, and I couldn't finish it. I tried it and it was like, just instantly, no, no part of that was going to make it down my throat. Why did I have to make that sound so weird? Anyway, one more comment. If like the reference was, this is from DRC97 instantly. The reference was to the second squad from Bleach. Would you rather have a Lightning Scythe, Mugetsu, uh, Death Note, or Alucard from Helsing? I've never seen Helsing, so I'm afraid I don't know his abilities. I do know that that's Dracula backwards. But other than that, I, I have to miss that one out. I don't know what they're capable of. I would rather have... Well, Mugetsu is a one-use thing. Unless he's retconned that, because Bleach is awful now. I would rather have a Lightning Scythe. Have you watched the anime or read the manga Black Lagoon? No, never actually heard of it either. Sorry for the long question. That's not a long question. And as I said last time, you, no one needs to apologise for long questions. Sometimes I will ad-lib and cut bits out, you know, just to keep things going. I don't have a problem with you typing a lot of stuff. Feel free. But that was the last question. I'm recording this quite early after the last one got posted again because I'm a full week ahead of my uploading right now, which is where I want to be, because when Monster Hunter 4 comes out, that's all I'm going to be playing for pretty much a week, probably. <laughs> so I hope I'm recovered by then as well. But anyway, yes, I have nothing else to talk about that I can think of. I hope you enjoyed the little look at the bizarre Japanese candies. I will once again leave you with what I'm just always going to refer to as colon candy. And those horrible things on it. Uh, next week I'll show off a different game, maybe a figurine. Maya, one last chance. Do you want to hop on the bed and get a cameo? You'll be internet famous. No? She's just she's just staring at me. You want to come here? No? No, she went straight back to scratching. You can't say I didn't try. One 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 day when I don't have to do a second take and then lose it. She'll hop on the bed or something. Oh, oh, oh. You lazy git. She just went to bed. <laughs> I think that's a sign that I should probably go, plus I hear my, my throat is going a little bit. Thank you as always for watching, see you again next Monday, and ta-ta for now.